Hi, this is Judy Marino with the CMCC Library, and right now I'm going to be demoing a search for Ruth Burke's psychology class. Um, students in this class have an assignment where you're asked to find information on diseases and syndromes or environmentally induced conditions that affect children's development. So you need to include history, symptoms, presentation, long-term effects, prevalence, causes, and treatment. Um, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to look at hunger and child development and I'm interested to know what the effects of nutrition or poor nutrition or food insecurity are on children's development. So we're going to start with the ProQuest database and to get to that you have to go to the library's website first. There's a link to that off the CM main page. There's also a link off CM Connect. So once you're here at the library you'll find a link to ProQuest about halfway down on the right hand side. Click that here. You won't be able to Google ProQuest and get to the right website from home. Um, always start from the library's homepage. So here we are um, and as you can see I was practicing so we're going to pretend that that wasn't there. Um, sometimes you'll be dumped into this basic search screen which gives you one search box and all the databases are are clumped by major subject area. So if you wanted to, you could search all the arts databases at once, you could search all the business databases at once, which is fine and kind of nice. Um, for this assignment, since we're looking at a, a wide variety of um, results, I'm going to cast a wide net and I'm going to search all these databases at once. Um, you can get a list of all the databases here uh, if you wanted to, you could search any one of them uh, one by one if you wanted to, but again, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to go to this advanced search screen and instead of the one box, we get a bunch of different boxes and we also have different ways that we can um, play with our search here on this advanced search screen. So I'll keep coming back to this. Um, so I'm going to type in, uh, let's see. I'm going to type in hunger here in this box. And when you land on this page, the default search here will be anywhere except full text, which means that this term hunger is going to be searched in the title and the author and the information about the article and even the summary, but not within the full text. Um, so if you were to change this to anywhere, it would search hunger in the full text of the millions of articles which are out there, which is really sort of a daunting, impractical search. But if you had something extremely focused that you wanted to look at, um, that's where this anywhere search might be helpful for you. So we'll stick with the default, which is anywhere ex except full text. And we're going to add the terms uh, child development here. And we'll click our search box. And we have uh, 2,000 results here in articles, newspapers, journals. Um, there's two results in our ebook collection, which show up here. So this is fine. Let's go back to the advanced search screen and we'll play with this a little bit more. Um, we can search on hunger right here like we did. This is called a, a keyword search. If we were to change this to a subject heading search, it's going to be much more narrowed and focused. So we'll change child development as well. Instead of a keyword search, we'll, we'll search child development as a subject search and see what happens. So now we're down to 90 results. So this was pretty effective. Um, sometimes the subject headings work great, uh, sometimes they don't. So the next thing we want to do is limit our results to full text, which means that we're going to retrieve the results that actually have the articles. Um, we can't get results back with just a summary and expect to do the homework from there. So we'll limit to full text. And we've got 55 results now. So the next thing that we want to do is update our dates. Let's look at the publication date here. 1998 is a little old for me. I'm going to uh, slide this over and we'll 
look for articles within the past 10 years. We'll update that. And that's stripped away about five results. The next thing that we could do is we could look at source types. So if we click on more options, we get a list of all the sources that are included. Um, scholarly journals, you need three results from scholarly journals. So you're going to want to certainly include those. I'm going to exclude newspapers. I don't think I really need to look at newspaper articles for this assignment. I'm going to exclude wire feeds. Wire feeds are, are pretty much the same thing as newspapers. And uh, we'll include reports, magazines, and trade journals, but we'll exclude blogs, podcasts, and websites. And we'll apply those source limits. And now we're down to 27 results. The last thing that we're going to do is scroll down and look for our document types here. So we'll go to more options. And if we find anything here that says editorial, op-ed, or commentary, we're going to exclude that because those are people's opinions, which I really don't want in this assignment. I'm looking for facts and we'll apply that. And now we have a somewhat decent set of results, 26 results. So let's see, this one is India's hunger rating falls to reflect drop in underweight prevalence. That's the name of the article. BMJ, British Medical Journal, is the name of the journal. The second result here, U.S. housing insecurity and the health of very young children. So that has to do with housing. Fully cooked emergency aid food. Here we go. The negative effects of poverty and food insecurity on child development. Let's click on the title so that we can open this up and see what we're looking at. So here's the title of the article and next our authors are listed. Um, this is the name of the journal that it came out of and there's some publication information. So the screen that it automatically goes to here is this full text screen. Um, this is sort of a just a, a web page version of the article. So we've got the abstract, which is a summary, and then the full text of the article that you can see goes on for quite a bit. This next tab here is just a PDF version of the article, which is essentially a, a prettier version of the article. So printing either one of these would be fine if you were going to use it and all of your options here for printing, emailing or saving it or here on the right hand side. The next thing that you should do if you're going to use this article is this tab called the abstract details tab. So from here, uh, ProQuest has listed out all the important things that you need to pull from here in order to create your APA citation. So you've got your title of your article, your author, uh, the publication title, which is the name of the journal or the magazine that it came out of, volume issue pages, publication date, um, source type, scholarly journals, so you know that you can check off one of your scholarly journal requirements. And then some other information here, this um, thing called document URL. Um, this you will include in your citation as your URL. Don't use the URL up at the top of your browser bar on the top left hand side. That won't work for you for the same reason that you can't Google ProQuest from home and get to the right database. Um, you can't use the URL on the upper right hand side of your screen. So always look for something within the abstract and the details page that looks like this. And then lastly, the name of the database, ProQuest Central. If you had something right around this area that said DOI, you would use that in your APA citation as well. It's just a digital object identifier. If there's no DOI listed here, you simply skip it. So that was about it for ProQuest. And next, we're going to go back to the library's website. And we're going to do the exact same search in the EBSCO databases. Um, ProQuest and EBSCO have slightly different coverage, so it's a good idea to search both of them. So the exact same thing that we did before, we'll go to the library's website. There's a link to EBSCOhost just above the ProQuest link. 
And again, from home, you'd be asked for your CM ID number. And then we're going to search all the databases. So we're going to select all of these databases here. Some of these will be great for our topic. Um, there's ERIC, which is an education database, Greenfile Health Source. Some of these health databases are perfect. Um, so we'll continue. And we are dumped into something that looks exactly like our advanced search screen that we had in ProQuest. So we'll do the same thing again. We'll type in hunger. And this is a, a keyword search that we're doing here. Um, we're going to change this right off the back to subject. And we'll include child development. And we'll try this again as a subject search here since it worked so well in ProQuest and see what happens. So 71 results, which is pretty good, about on par with what we had before in ProQuest. So again, we'll limit to full text. Now we're down to 23. Um, we have some very old publications here. I'm going to pull this forward and we'll make this a little bit more recent. And then we can look at our source types here. And these all look fine. Academic journals, journals, and reports. So we're going to leave that just as it is. So this looks pretty good. So from here, we'll start skimming some of these results. And pick one that that strikes me as being something that would be good. Here we go. Prevalence of food insecurity and utilization of a food assistance program. So we'll open this up. And this screen is slightly different in that you've got your HTML full text view over here. Uh, your PDF is right underneath it. And then your options for emailing, printing, filing are over here on the right hand side. Um, so you want to make sure that you, first of all, print the article and then go back underneath this detailed record. And this is the information here that you need to create your citation. So you've got your title and author volume, uh, the name of the database and the name of the journal that it came out of. Another quick note here, if you look at this thing that says cite right here, know that each database ProQuest included will give you um, a citation of what they think is a correct citation for any article that you're looking at. Um, it's okay to look at this. It's pretty close to what your APA citation might look like, but know that whenever you choose these um, citations from the database, there's always errors. So you want to make sure that you go back and clean those up and you can use Noodle tools for that. So if you're interested in Noodle tools, come, come and see me in the library and we'll get you set up with that. So that's about all I had for today. Um, please come and see me or anybody else that works here in the library. And uh, thanks for listening.